that trial seven years ago was the beginning of it all. This I know beyond a doubt. The mysteries of the past work their magic on the present. But you'll soon be finding all this out for yourself. Which of Magnifi Grammarie's disciples pulled that trigger? Where did the vanishing defendant Zach Grammarie go? What dark truth lurks behind the forged diary page? And what about the girl who was left behind? Sorry, what? Um... Huh. Uh, m uh, hello, everybody. Welcome back to Let's Play Apollo Justice Ace Attorney. Um, I have no idea what's going on. Last time, we did... Well, we, we found out how Phoenix got disbarred. It was because of forged evidence that... Sorry for hitting the mic there. That he himself did not... Like, get on his own, it was supplied to him, and then Valent was looking pretty sus, not gonna lie. Uh, it was looking like he killed uh, uh, Magnify. Not to mention, I, I didn't mention this like last time, but there was also the fact that he was getting increasingly worked up when we were calling him out on his lies. It was like, oh no! So it's like, Valent, what the hell, dude? Um, but yeah, then Zack disappeared, and now here we are. The past left us these four keys to unlocking the truth. They were so excited to show off what the freaking 3DS could do. Uh, but that's not all. There are four keys in the present as well. And when all the questions have found their answers, the final trial will begin. But first, you must chase the truth through then and now. Think of it as a game. Stares directly at the camera. Hey, Phoenix! I, Phoenix Wright, will be your guide through this game. That terrible trial saw me present forged or present forged evidence. It ended half finished when the defendant vanished. What became of me after that? As your investigation proceeds, the answer will become clear. Oh, and one more thing. There is something I must tell you. As Apollo Justice has his bracelet, so too do I have my own weapon of sorts. My Magatom! Oh my god, we're gonna have spirit locks. What does it do, you ask? That I would have you see for yourself. Well now, shall we begin? Touch the arrow to switch between past and present. It must begin seven years ago. In the past. It is right after my last trial came to an abrupt end. Now that you know the game, let's play. Are we breaking the fourth wall now? I'm... I am big confused. So we got four places in the past. Detention Center, Defendant Lobby Number 2, Ranko Law Offices, and The Rue Studio. Alright, let's go to the Detention Center. The Nightmare Trial was over. And the new Nightmare figuring out what had happened had just begun. I wanted to wake up, to walk away. But I figured I'm the only one who could do this, probably. And besides, I had plenty of time. Thanks to the Bar Association Review Board's decision, it's hard to work when your attorney's badge has been taken away. Who's in the detention center? Valent? Ah, uh, yep. What strange sight doth mine eyes behold? Excuse me? Two men on either side of a single transparent pane. And it seems fickle fate has switched sides, so to speak. The forger of fakes walks freely. While the innocent languishes within these flexiglass confines. There's been no proof that I forged anything. Nor proof that I took the life of my dear mentor. Yet, these chains cannot hold me for long. The stage awaits. And what, may I ask, awaits you? A little piano and a cold little hole in the wall. But since you are here, what shall we discuss? The shooting of Magnify Grammary, for one. Who pulled that trigger, Valent or his partner, Zack? His partner vanished before the answer could be found. If I'm going to get any closer to the truth, this is the place to start. I have to hand it to my partner. 
He knows how to make an exit. That's talent. Yes, he made my attorney's badge disappear, and he never even touched it. Lori Spotlight always leaves someone weeping in the shadows. Yet his very disappearance is itself a revelation. Revealing what? Zach Grimmery killed Magnify. It's as good as a signed confession. That's certainly been public opinion's take on it. I grow tired of my cage. And the time of my release is near. I must go and prepare. Plan on jumping back into the magic right away? As long as an audience so wa waits with bated breath, there will be Valent. And also... Yes. Now that my partner has disappeared, Magnify's repertoire... is mine. Talent Grimmery has a tradition to uphold. More and more, he's just like, what? Just so many flags. Is that true? Seen in this light, the trial was quite good to me, <laughs> verdict or no. And you can't pay for that kind of publicity. The suspicion on you hasn't lifted entirely, Valent. After all, you received one of those letters, too. You were just as obligated to follow Magnify's instructions as your partner. So I was, but only Zach Grammary followed them. Let us not speak any more of who shot what. Now that my partner has vanished, the question is moot. I'm more interested in learning something else, actually. What might that be? Want to know what Magnify had up his sleeve? How could he coerce you and your partner to kill him? The trick up his sleeve? <laughs> Perhaps you do not know. Know what? A great magician never reveals his secrets. Oh my dude, it's on and popping for- Oh shit. Four? I didn't think it would be that easy. The audience must remain forever in the audience. Bathing in the reflected glow of the spotlight. Boy, don't make me get pin and teller on your ass. They'll reveal what's going on. My Magatama, one of my most prized possessions, which I got during a certain case. It can show me the locks on people's hearts. And if I can unlock their hearts, they'll tell me their secrets. The Megatama starts it all, and the Megatama ends it. Alright, we got a lock on that. I will return to him. Right now, let's check out the Defendant Lobby. I know I haven't presented anything to him yet, but just want to cover all bases first. Didn't think I'd be back here for a while. I didn't want to have to remember that day. Though I deeply regret having to declare a verdict in this way. This trial is over. Ah, oh, your honor. Y yes, Mr. Zack? There is one thing I wish to make clear. Today, in this courtroom, you cannot declare me guilty. What are you talking about? I am talking about this. Ah, magic. M Mr. Enigmar. Defendants escape, find them quick. Bailiff, close all exits from the building. Madabu, he must not be allowed to escape. When I came here on that fateful morning, I still had my badge, but now, like an amputated limb, I can still feel it itching. Where do I start? I don't even have the authority to investigate. Hey, you there, sir! Oh, no. Meekins! Down on the hands, floor your head, now, now, now! I forgot the voice I gave him. What's the big deal? My ears. No unauthorized personnel aren't allowed in here. But that would mean all unauthorized personnel are allowed. Double negatives. Zoink! I just say it like it is, sir. And it's usually wrong. Thrown out of the precinct. Lost my friends, my girl, and even my wallet. We've met before, haven't we? You defended him, Phoenix. On a case. Two years ago? No recollection of that, sir. Huh? For me, working on a case is always in the present progressive tense, sir. There is no past. There is only now, sir. Okay, okay, you're the bailiff, right? They made him a bailiff? 
honestly, that's probably for the best. Yes, sir. Court bailiff Mike Meekins at your service, sir. Um, I'm asking me with the bailiff at this court who let the magician escape. Let me try to make this as absolutely clear as possible for you, sir. It was me, sir. B but you were a regular police officer once, right? <laughs> Sometimes bad things happen to good people, sir. Somebody tells me it's a long story. Let's not go there. So, you were in charge of security at the time of the vanishing? I'm dying over here. Oh, oh, it's a hard knock life, sir. Thrown out of the precinct, lost my friends, my girl, and even my wallet. Guess I wasn't the only victim. God dang it, Meekins. What happened? Last time we met, you were a police officer, right? In fact, you're still wearing your uniform. Sir, I wish I didn't have to tell you this. The last year, tragedy struck a rising star at the precinct. I lost my case files four times in three days! They fired me. It takes real talent. Actually, they don't know what they're missing. So here I am, sir, forced to start from square one, a lowly bailiff. But you're a uniform. I took it with me as a souvenir the day I was fired. That can't be legal. Did he take the gun too? So, you're the one who let the magician get away that day? I'm dying over here! A star rises among the court bailiffs full of hope, then tragedy strikes. Is there anything you can tell me about it? About Zach Grammary's disappearance? Oh, the humanity! That's enough of that. Why, yes, I'd say it was around 2 p.m. when I heard a commotion in court. I opened the door to see what might be amiss. The door slams open, slam, and some guy's face is right there in front of me. Face! So, you saw someone suspicious coming your way. Yes, and I, being a bailiff of little standing, I gave chase. I chased that silk hat all the way down the hall, sir. I have a diagram of, oh, I have a diagram of the court building here. Aha! Uh -huh. There's courtroom number seven. That's where I was, sir. All by myself. Nary a friend to call my own. Okay. Which way does that Grimmery run after bursting through the courtroom door? He went up, like this, and around the corner, like that. So I, with no delay, ran after him with no delay. When I turned the corner, I saw that magic man run into the defendant lobby. Swiftly, I ran. Following him, I threw myself boldly into the room. I remember it like it was right here, because it was. Lobby number two, sir. You ran into this room? Hmm, I don't see any place to hide in here. Believe it or not, sir, I didn't believe it. Here, in this room! The magician! Gone, vanished, like a puff of smoke. Except there wasn't even any smoke! He was just... gone. That's impossible. Yes, that, that word! How many times have I said that word? Even the sound of it causes me indescribable pain. I'm dying! I'm dying over here! Okay, okay, I won't say it again, promise. But you have to admit, it's impo-difficult to vanish into thin air. Did you search the lobby? I searched. Why the pause? Th 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 there was n nothing here at all, sir. That's right, nothing was here, sir. How can he talk so loud and still be hiding something? So Zack was in this room when he vanished. Absolutely, sir! I saw him with my own eye! Eyes! That red silk cat! That flowing cape! He ran right in here, right inside this room! Silk hat, cape. That's Zack, alright. But sir, look at the room! There's not a single place to hide! Sir, there was nothing I could do but... Nothing, sir. I tried everything and uh, oh, blah blah. I tried nothing and now I'm all out of options. What about now? Have any ideas? Sir! Uh, 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 ideas about what exactly, sir, if you don't mind me asking? You've had quite a bit of time since then. Has nothing occurred to you at all? Do you have any idea what trick he might have used to disappear like that? What you hiding, Meekins? Oh, he got a two lock. Should have known. Meekins! Ooh, we're coming, we're coming for that ass, Meekins. Just you wait. Just you wait. 
phone's ringing. I have to ignore it right now. Okay, we got a two lock on Meekins, a four lock on Valent. Oh my lord. One moment while I answer the phone. Very important phone call, just to ask me. Did you see the grass clippings out in front of the house? Anyway. Oh, morning, Daddy. Oh, I'm so glad you came. You okay, Daddy? They picking on you? <laughs> I am fine, as always. So, boy is here to help me, after all. That's a young man to you. Good morning. That's a cute outfit you have on. Thanks, my first show's today, after all. Two weeks had passed since then. I called her into my office. Trucy, there's something we need to talk about. It's been two weeks since your father disappeared. We need to start thinking about your future. I um did some calling around. This is hard to say, but you have no living relatives. Valent? Well, I mean, okay, he is in custody, granted. So, I was wondering if you wanted to stay with me for a while. Just until your daddy comes home. It won't be long. I hope. Uh, of course. It's totally your choice. If you don't like it here, you can go wherever you'd like. No, that's not how custody or foster care works. Go look up some places you might like to stay at. This is so weird. Mr. Attorney, Daddy told me about you. He said I could trust you. Huh? Really? So if I stay here, does that mean you'll be my family? <laughs> huh? Uh, um, I guess so. Getting weirder. Um, Mr. Attorney? Er, actually, why don't you call me Nick? Or you can call me Daddy if you like. It doesn't have to be today or anything. Why, why would you say that, Phoenix? Okay, say Daddy. That was quick. Yes. If I move here, I have to switch schools, right? And I was thinking I haven't paid for lunches at my last school for a year. So thanks, Daddy. Uh. Oh, and this office? It's a little blah. A little color goes a long way, you know. Uh. Oh, and Daddy, you got fired from work, right? <laughs> Don't you worry one bit. I'll work twice as hard. We'll make it through this. Trucy, how old are you? Oh, I'm eight. But don't let appearances deceive you. I'm a young professional. Stick with me and you'll do just fine, Daddy. Uh, thanks. Does it feel like she's already in charge? So, Daddy, you got fired from being a lawyer, right? You can at least kind of look aside or something when you say that. It's actually kind of hard for me. For Daddy. Oh, I'm sorry, Daddy. Wait, is that foolish pride? My other Daddy always used to talk about that. Uh, actually, that's pretty accurate. So here's my idea. We'll make a new office. The law just seems so stiff, doesn't it? And no one will be my friend at school that way. Well, that won't do. I guess. I just don't know how much about anything other than, or don't know much about anything other than law. Or even much about law, if you were to ask some people. Maybe the problem is calling it an office. We should run an agency instead. You mean, like a talent agency? Forgive me for asking, but doesn't that require talent? You've got me, don't you? I'm a professional. Professional. After all, I am directly descended from the famous Zach Grammary. Directly descended? He's your father. Oh. And I am directly descended from the famous Phoenix Wright, too. I think an eight-year-old just massaged my ego. Why the daddy part? Oh, okay. Could you tell me a bit more about your daddy? Or Zach Grammary? Daddy? Sure thing, daddy. <laughs> this is so weird. Which daddy was that again? Daddy's so amazing. The biggest star of Troop Grammary. And they're big. The Grammaries. They're on television a lot. Haven't seen them on much recently, come to think of it. Big magic happens when you put Zack and Val and Grammary together, you know. Once they made a giant waterfall right there on the stage. 
and this giant trout swam up the giant waterfall. Let me guess, there was a giant fisherman waiting for him at the top? I wish I could have seen more of Daddy's magic. Ah, I shouldn't have brought it up so soon. I wonder what'll happen to me with Daddy and Mommy both gone. Mommy? Well, yeah, Phoenix. Uh, you know, when a man and a woman have a child... Uh, yeah, what about Mommy? I haven't heard anything about Trucy's mother. But I have my magic and a great daddy, even if he is unemployed. You know, I think things are going to be okay. I wonder if she'll talk about her mother. But first, let's hear about the professionalism. So, Truce, you're a professional? Yes, um, it's like that thing they say. Baby frogs grow up to be frogs. They say that? I always thought it was funny, though. What was? Aren't baby frogs called tadpoles? Maybe they thought it would be easier to understand that way for kids. How stupid. Right. So in conclusion, you're a professional magician, Trucy? That's right. Well, well, wanna see a trick? You're going to do a magic trick? Please show me. Actually, I would like to see your trick. The future of the agency depends on it, after all. That's the spirit. Ready? Here goes. Ta-da! Mr. Hat. Hey folks, it's Mr. Hat. I gotta say, it's good to be seen. <gasps> oh, you can see her arm moving when his when he's talking. Yarg! Whoa, that was startling. The amazing Mr. Hat. Isn't he great? The friendly neighborhood Mr. Hat at your service. He certainly makes an impression. Doesn't he? <laughs> I'm so glad you like him, Daddy. Though my routines do get a bit heady at times. Ah, get it? Heady? A friendly neighborhood Mr. Hat nearly gave me a heart attack. I see. That might have been what Meekin saw. Interesting. Could you tell me about your mommy, if it's okay? Mommy was so pretty. She was like an angel up on stage. On stage? You mean with your daddy? Yep. She was always there with Zack and Valent, smiling. But then, she went away. Went away? It was a grand illusion, but she made a mistake. She vanished, and I guess she didn't know how to get back. Maybe so. I cried then. A lot. That's when Daddy gave me this. Here. What the fuck is going on here? Is that Lamoir? The hair. Because I remember when I was like, it, it's kind of ingrained in me from just like. With, with, with Apollo's bracelet, like, looking for her tails, that hair looks... Uh, uh, this is your mother? She's beautiful. Her name's Thalassa. Thalassa Grammary. Poor girl. I didn't know her, mo her mommy had gone missing. And now her daddy's vanished too, right before her eyes. Hey, Daddy, you won't... Don't worry, I won't vanish. I promise. Right, you can't even do magic. You're like a backup plan. <laughs> Daddy always said to have a backup plan. <laughs> wow. I guess all I rate as is a backup plan. I think that's probably enough for today. Sorry to ask you so much all at once like that. It's okay. After all, we're family. I just hope you're ready. The right talent agency opens tomorrow. W what? B but are we representing anyone? Me and you. That makes two, Daddy. I think you need more than that to make an agency. Besides, you may be a magician, but I'm no talent. Oh, I'm sure there's something you're good at. 
Well, when you put it that way. You mean you don't have any tricks? No old standbys? This will not do. A boy should always have a trick or two in his pocket. Okay, okay, I'll think of something. That's the spirit. See you bright and early tomorrow, Daddy. Welcome to the team, Daddy-o. The team. Right. Sometimes when magicians vanish, they leave something behind. That's how Trucy became Trucy Wright, my daughter. To be honest, I was pretty lost those first few days. Thinking back on it, it was a pretty dark time in my life. But Trucy, happy, smiling Trucy, she was my light. That's still kind of weird, my dude. Ooh, check that off, okay. Do we unlock anything for the Prelzo? Nope. Well then let's go to Drew Stew, Dio. I also forgot the voice I gave Drew. I figured you'd come here sooner or later. I sighted on sooner, Drew Misham. Was it? I haven't done anything illegal. I'm sorry, what? I didn't come here to whine about past events. I wanted to ask you some questions. Suppose you have that right. That day, the entire court descended into chaos. Only you stood still, your eyes calmly watching. I admit, it made quite an impression on me. I'm used to finding myself in outrageous situations. Oh, I'm used to finding myself in outrageous situations. Phoenix Wright, was it? I'll answer what I can. I'm not sure, but it feels like I'm being watched intensely. Ah, this is my daughter. Vera, say hello. She's gone. Shall we begin then? Judging from this place, you're a painter? Not, sadly, a profitable one. I've never sold a painting. It's a source of considerable embarrassment. I would be able to get by were it only me. Your daughter? Her mother grew weary of me and left. I don't want her to grow up needy, Mr. Wright. That is why I began my other occupation. Forgeries. Don't look at me with those eyes. I know what it is that I do. So then why did you lie to my face and say you haven't done anything illegal? Or have the paintings they bring there stolen? Who knows what my copies are used for? But some of your works aren't paintings, correct? You may not believe me when I tell you this. That was my first work outside painting. What? To think it would be used as evidence in a murder trial. I never even imagined the possibility. Then why did you take the job? I was well paid, very well paid. I think he feels worse about it than I do. The past is hard to escape. Honestly, the sooner I can put this behind me, the better. With apologies to you, of course. Sorry, but it's not going to be quite so easy. He's trying to forget what he made. Looks like I have to remind him. Got your ass. Mr. Gotcha was in. Got your ass. Your work. Don't try to pretend you've forgotten. Sure, all you did was make a copy. But that copy might have destroyed the life of an innocent man. I'm responsible too, which is why I have to know. And you have to tell me. I it will be difficult to escape this. Then let's talk. No nonsense, Phoenix. Oh, snap. Well, then, ready to tell me about this work you did? It wasn't like anything I had attempted before. I guess it would be a little different from paintings. 
That is not what I mean. All my previous work, it sufficed to create a copy. This wasn't a copy? The client gave me two things that day. The first was a sample page as a reference. The second, a printed document I can only surmise was written by my client. So he used the real writing as a reference to reproduce what the client wrote. Yes, as I said, it was my first job of that nature. So, who was your client? As I said in court, I do not know. Really? Even for such a suspicious request? If it was me, I'd want to know as much as I could about the requester. I, I never met them, but not personally, I... It's a two lock. Ah, psyche lock, of course. Seems like you're still hiding something. Something about this work. Ugh. Uh -huh. You know what, let's go for it. Well then, ready to tell me about this work you did? It wasn't like anything- Oh, wait, it would be a little different from paintings or something I mean... Uh... Okay. I have to actually press the Megatama. You're hiding something. <laughs> Let's hear it then. What are you hiding from me, Mr. Misham? Sorry, but I really don't know. I never met the client. True, when I asked the client's name, there were no psyche locks in sight. Regardless, you're hiding something. You have to be, otherwise it wouldn't make any sense. Hmm. Why are you doing this to me? Well, I've made my stand. No backing down now. So what's Misham hiding? Not the fool. Oh shit. Because we know in the future that it was actually Vera. He never met her. She did. He's hiding the forger. Pretty much piece together what it is from what you've said. What is it then? You tell me what you knew about the client. I couldn't see any psyche locks. Psycho locks? Some sort of asylum security or new hairstyle perhaps? But then they did show up, didn't they? Who was your client? As I said in court, I do not know. Really? Even for such a suspicious request? If it was me, I want to know as much as I could about the requester. I never met them. Not personally, I... Not personally? Those words triggered the psyche lock. Again with the psycho locks. I really must know what they are. So, you didn't meet with the client. But someone else did. Maybe the real forger behind this evidence? Hmm. Perhaps I'm hung up on this lock business. But I'm afraid you've lost me. Yeah, well, I didn't come here to talk about psyche locks. As long as I come to the right conclusion, it doesn't matter how I got there. And your conclusion is... Well, and your conclusion is... The real forger behind this wasn't you, Mr. Misham. P -p Poppycock! I don't know what you're talking about. It's my work, I tell you. Made here in my studio. Who else could it have been but me? That's the real question, isn't it? If the forger wasn't you, I don't have many other people to choose from. The real forger at Drew Studio is... I just want to see... Age 12. Currently on trial in the future, that is. Still missing after her disappearance. That is... That is Glamour's hair. I don't care what anyone says. He is actually 24. I just love age deceased. But... The real forger is your daughter, Vera Misham, isn't it? Ridiculous! My daughter's only 12 years old, Mr. Wright. I've always been more one for landscapes, not surrealism. Nice comeback, but you're shaking in your boots. I've got you now. The only two people with access to this studio are you and your daughter. The psyche locks tell me you're not the forager, which makes your daughter the only possibility. Ahem. <clears throat> I feel very much on the verge of going psycho lock myself. <laughs> what does that even mean? You can't use that as a verb or adjective. I don't know how you knew, but you're right. The one who made this page. 
It's my daughter, Vera, not I. She's only 12. A genius, you might call her. A precocious little girl outshining her father. There's been a lot of that going around recently. I let her play in the studio and she watched me. She taught herself in that way. The drafting tools and analytical devices I bought when they become, became necessary. My little girls play things now. Ah, do I detect a bit of fatherly pride? So Vera was the one who made this page. Would she know who the client was then? Actually, the client came once. Here, to this studio. What? Why didn't you say so sooner? But their face was covered, and they did not want to talk to me. So, they talked to your daughter. We'll speak only with the artist, the client told me. And that, then that little girl is the key to our mystery client's true identity. Okay, what do I do now? Maybe I should talk to her father a bit more. Or is it time to turn my attention to Vera? Mr. Mishim, I have a request. Let me guess. You'd like to speak with my daughter? Can I? My daughter has never been one to talk to strangers. She's quite shy. Extremely so, actually. With only one exception. Which was... Oddly enough, it was that client. I left the studio while they talked. I returned when they had finished. But she was laughing. It was the first time I'd seen anything of the sort. Please let me speak with her. Alright. Uh-oh. This could be tough. I wonder. Oh, okay. Alright, alright, alright. I was about to say... Trucy was the one that came with the forgery. Vera, was it? I... Would you like to have a friendly chat? Er, I'm Phoenix Wright, ex-lawyer and pianist. I'm still looking for the keys that say Do Re Mi. Can't find them anywhere. I'm no good at this. Need something to get through to this girl. Vera, was it? Uh, uh, hmm. Store the gun? Yeah, no. Um... Examining wouldn't hurt. It's an awfully small frame. What's inside it? A stamp. But please don't touch that. I'll get in trouble. The stamp belongs to Vera, you see. She always puts it somewhere so she can see it. That's Zack and Valent. The Grammaries, isn't it? The post office issued that commemorative stamp last year. The Grammys were at the height of their popularity. Not anymore. Not one of them has vanished off the face of the earth. Vera went to see one of their shows when she was quite small. She's been a dedicated fan ever since. She watched them every time they came on TV, until the end. I see. The stamp's quite hard to come by, I hear. I still wonder how she got her hands on it. What's this red envelope? Uh, don't touch that. That, sir, it's, it's quite important. The painter's face just changed hues. Guess I better behave, though it's tempting to just grab it. It's a pretty bottle. Uh, don't touch that, please. I'll get in trouble. It belongs to Vera, you see. She always puts it so where she can see it. She looks at it often. There's a light pink fluid inside. Nail polish, I'm guessing. Oh, that explains why she's always doing her nails. Vera, yes, yes, we took that one quite recently. 
I know I'm a painter. Why not paint a portrait instead? I've never been that good at people, unfortunately. All right. Shouldn't you practice? Hmm. Hmm. I'll sell you one for 50 cents. That's okay. They look kind of heavy. Used to work on his sales technique a bit. Hmm. And then there's this. My stamp. Hey, she spoke. Yeah, so this stamp. How can I keep her talking? Butter her up, Buttercup. Isn't your grammar amazing? Uh. Hmm? Yes? Oh. I especially like those two, Zack and Valent. I mean, they're, uh, that's so magical. Aren't they? Aren't they? Yeah. Whenever I go to one of their shows, I'm like, whoa, magic. You know? Me too. Me too. I love them. They're so cool. It's like, like magic. Yeah. All right, she's talking. Not saying much, but it's a start. I went and saw my father the other day. I went in ceremony at the Grammy Museum of Magic. The Grammy M Museum? They have one of those? I guess it makes sense now that they have their own commemorative stamp. So, have you been to one of their shows? Just once. I was little with father. The Grammy's on stage. It was like a dream. Disappearing, reappearing. Cutting apart, putting back together, they do it all! Yeah, yeah, maybe you can keep telling me stuff like this. You know? About Zack and Valent, maybe? Oh, oh sure! Alright, better get asking before she changes her mind. Yeah, just talk about them first. They're the best in the world! Huh? Oh, you mean True Grammary? Of course. Father gave it to me! Your father? But, I asked him about it. He didn't know how you got it. Oh! Oh, um, I guess I just took it, yeah! Took it? Father got a letter from that person. That person? You mean that letter was from the client? Oh, we talked about the Grammaries forever that day. I'm sure that's why I was sent that stamp. I didn't want to just send it back, so I took it. Oh my god, her fandom saved her freaking life. Because if she would have used that stamp to send it back, she would have died. They were sneaking on this client. So they were trying to get on her good side. I don't go outside much. I like to paint in here. Why don't you like the outside? There's bad people out there. Well, true, but there are lots of good people, too. Actually, I should tell you. She was almost kidnapped once. Kidnapped? Since then, she's been... Well, you can see for yourself. She refuses to leave the house. I see. Wait, but that doesn't make sense. She says she went to the Grammarie Museum. With you, in fact. Uh, yes, actually, she was quite insistent on it, much to my surprise. That was the first and last time she expressed such a desire to me. That person gave me a good luck charm. A good luck charm? For when I absolutely had to go outside. Yes, apparently she received something. A gift. From that client, actually. She won't tell me what it was. Father, I told you to keep that a secret. From that client, huh? This I have to hear about. Also, just one quick moment. And back, but first the forgeries. So your father tells me you're good at painting all sorts of things. I really like painting, a lot. Father is always very happy when I paint them exactly the same. So, you did this too? Oh, yes, that was my first job. Your first? All I used to do was paint the same thing I saw. 
But this was totally different. The pen slips and the way the writer held the pen and the pressure on the nib. I had to use a microscope and analyze it on the computer. She seems happy. Odd, her work was the last nail in the grammary coffin. I guess no one told her. Mm-hmm, that would crush her. So, you met the person that asked you to do this job? And you talked with them? What's this about a good luck charm you received? I can't talk about it! Eh? Huh? If I do, it won't work anymore. That's what I was told. Yeah, but I really, really have to know. It's a two lock. We can do this. Time to do some psyche unlocking. Kid, this ain't my first rodeo. I mean, I probably could have did Meekins too, but it, it was like early on. Seem to trust this client quite a lot, in fact. Because they gave you this stamp? No, that's not why. They listened to me, to my problem. The problem? It keeps her inside all the time. Don't go outside if you don't want to. That's what they told me. But I absolutely have to go out. All I had to do was use a good luck charm. A good luck charm that your client gave you? I think I know what your client might have given you, actually. Is this your good luck charm? Um... The stamp? Hmm... Good luck charm is different different people... Hmm... Yeah, that that was a that was a stretch. Everyone <laughs> has a different way of breaking the news. People think about being totally wrong. All right, let's stop. Is it going to be something in here then? Chance. Hmm. <laughs> it can't be anything. All right. Let me go ahead and uh, break Meekins then. This should be simple. This was probably Mr. Hat that he saw. A disappearing trick. Okay, Mr. Meekins. What do you know? Spit it out. He, he, hey, who, 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 what's with this atmosphere in here all of a sudden? You know something, and I'm going to find out what. Zack and Grimmery vanished from this room. How'd he do it? <laughs> How, sir? Well, sir, I can't say as I, sir. Why are you so nervous if you aren't hiding something? Well, sir, I... You see, at the time, sir, I was here, and... Listen, it was impossible. What could such a little girl possibly do anyway? What did you just say? Near, sir, did I just say something, sir? No, you screamed it through that megaphone of yours. There was someone else in the room, wasn't there? Sir, I'm going to have to invoke my right to remain in the state of not talking. It's okay, Meekins. You don't have to tell me who Zack's accomplice was. I know who was here in this room that day. But, uh, boom. Sir, sir, I've never seen that girl until just the other day. Mr. Meekins, I'm not buying it. Sir! Oh, we got him. Sir, that day she was here in the room, sir. But he wasn't. You mean... You chased her into this room, not him? Sir, in my days as a police officer, literally days, I learned a thing or two. Okay, just one thing, but it was how not to mistake a girl for a seven foot tall magician. Seven feet? Zack isn't that tall, is he? You have a point. I find it hard to imagine that anyone would mistake a little girl for Zack Grammary. But you saw something. Yes, you did, boy. And therein lies the trick. 
I think you know what it was, Mr. Meekins. Tell me, does this trick look familiar? <laughs> the amazing Mr. Hat. <laughs> What's that? The girl's favorite trick. The amazing Mr. Hat. She uses it in her show down at the Wonder Bar. Have you been to the Wonder Bar? So, it wasn't a waking dream, was it, sir? C come again? That night, on stage, I saw a vision. Except, it wasn't a vision. It was a hat. An amazing Mr. Hat. He really exists. Okay. I remember it clearly, though the details are a little vague. Zach Grammary exited the courtroom. I gave chase and cornered him in the corner room, sir. Zach Grammary, do you think you can escape me, guys? Down your hands, floor on your head. Hello? Something the matter, mister? Er, no, that is, sir. I'm currently chasing the suspect, sir. Zach Grammary, you know him? Oh, I love Zach Grammary. His magic is the best. I'm his biggest fan. I see. That's why you're wearing that costume you're wearing. Anyway, the very same Zack came into this room. And no one's been in here except me. But he has to be in here somewhere. Under the sofa. In the trash can. Behind the painting. Under the rug. So, Trucy was his accomplice. Imagine my astonished surprise when, one week later, I just happened to walk into a bar and see him. Mr. Hat. I couldn't believe my own eyes. For a while, I thought it hadn't all been a long dream. A dream that lasted a week? Hey, I mean, sometimes you get dreams like that, my, my dude. Like, it's, it's rough. But it wasn't the magician who disappeared. It was Mr. Hat. <laughs> well, it seems complex. What really happened that day was quite simple. You were standing by the door, and out came Zack. But that wasn't all. Another person got in on the act, and she was standing in front of lobby number two. Along with Mr. Hat. Ah, and that's the beauty of it, isn't it? So, while you were standing in shock and amazement, the magician rounds the corner, and most likely runs through the closest door into lobby number one. This is where you come in. You turn the corner, in rather lukewarm pursuit, and at that very moment, Trucy runs into lobby number two. Then, all she has to do is tuck away the amazing Mr. Hat. Sir, I... I only lost sight of him for the briefest of moments. Then I saw that cape! Zack Grammary's red cape! Fluttering like a... cape! Astounding, sir! All my days of posting queries and making inquiries and chasing quarries wasted. It was as if I could see them melting away like... An ice cream cone left by the side of the road to die! But a scattered remains of a messily eaten chocolate parfait! Such sweet sorrows. I see what you did there. I'm sorry. I had no idea how much you'd suffer on account of this case. It... It's an honor, sir! I've apologized to people many, many times, sometimes more than once. But this is the first time anyone's ever apologized to me! Actually, about that girl. I'm sort of her guardian now. Is that so? Sir! You should know that I harbor no ill feelings whatsoever in my harbor! Um, okay. Let the defendant escape. That's the stone cold truth. Just another step on my way from singing the blues to wearing the blues. Someday, sir, I'll be standing side by side with the great detective Gumshoe! Er, um, Mr. Meekins, this is a free ticket to the show at the Wonder Bar. If you want. It... It's an honor, sir. Sir, I can't count the number of things I've had taken from me, sir. But no one's ever given me anything for free! Right, I'll see you in court next time then, sir. I look forward to it. I didn't get anything from him. All eyes were on Zach Grammary that day in court until his mysterious disappearance. Now part of the mystery has been revealed, but the magician remained out of sight. 
It'll be seven years before I met him again. Because the way I thought things were going to pan out, it's like you get everything in the past and then you get to go to the present. Huh. Let me check something real quick. Sorry, I'm just like taking in this stuff. This is almost like an investigation. I mean, almost like an investigation. It is an investigation. I'm trying to see. Like, the parts may be a bit lopsided, but I guess if I do like three, three, and then two, like complete three sections, complete three sections, and then complete the final two, which will probably have like their own bit of story. That could work. But then I also did a lot of talking in here and in here. I don't know. I don't know, but... Alright, well, yeah, at, at risk of making things a bit lopsided, I will go ahead and just end this part right here. I should probably choose one of these places to, like, go there and, like, save the game or something. But, yeah, um... This is getting interesting. Interesting indeed. Um... And then all of this is going to tie into the present in some way. Like... Hmm... This is... So we know... I mean, at the very least, we know how... Um... Zack was able to escape... These two Psyche Locks, I mean, obviously I'm going to have to get those before I get Valence. Like, maybe something in the present will help me with that. I'm Though, I mean, to be fair, it was like, I used my own prior knowledge to... I mean, maybe that is how it works. Like, you, you get some info in the present... And then you use that knowledge, like you, the player, breaking the fourth wall here. You use that to sort of, like, break his logic in the past. And time paradoxes, man. It's it's rough. It's rough. But, yeah. We're going to end things off here. Next time, we continue the Mason system. Or is this all the simulation that Phoenix Wright did for the jury thing to test Apollo. I'm very confused, but yeah. Uh, thank you all for watching. Have a great day. And I'll see you next time for some more Let's Play Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. I'm, God dang it. Apollo Justice Ace Attorney. <laughs> Goodbye. Oh my God. I might actually... Yeah, Meekins was the only new character introduced here. Because I already use Vera's thing. Without even knowing we would be going into the past. I just, when I was looking up characters for the thumbnails and stuff, I was like, okay, there's Vera. Vera, like, and then there's young Vera? Huh. Alright, I, I can use that because I've kind of run out of, like, other NPCs. <laughs> but yeah, um, hmm. Alright, that doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. See y'all next time. Goodbye.